So, uh, very good to have all of you here today. Um, and uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, cycle highways. Uh, bicycle, si bicycle highways are uh, perhaps one of uh, the upcoming innovations in uh, bicycle infrastructure design, both here in the Netherlands and also in Europe. Basically, this paper tries to grapple with uh, the different types of modes that we use to get around and how uh, cycle highways should be conceptualized. Right? Is it more like a, a car highway, which for some of us, we have experienced driving? Is it more like a pedestrian path? Or is it something distinct on its own? And I set out to find out. So uh, the research question of this paper, how do practitioners conceptualize cycling experience in relation to the design of cycle highways? So what is it about uh, the experience of the person riding a bike that perhaps separates this mode of transport and makes it distinct from the other ways that we get around. This is one advertisement from the, uh, the planning department of uh, the rural area in Germany. And they're busy on a, a quite a national and provincial level on building out many of these bicycle highways. As you can notice here, they're very literal people. Huh? They put a bicycle in the middle of a highway, right? And that got me thinking, do we really want this? Is this how we're going to proceed uh, with the building of our infrastructure? Is this nice to, to cycle on? What kind of uh, emotions does this invoke? Even if we took away all the cars, is this appropriate for the mode of transport? Is it pleasant? And what causes urban planners and designers to try to make something like this? What's the point? And now we come to the definition. What is this bicycle highway thing? Because I think it uh, is very well defined by the way, way we try to conceptualize it. And I think right now, the definition is really on the engineering side of things. Right, so, uh, so this definition, you can see, it's focused on width, right? Uh, so it, it's saying that you can have a four meter profile, one, two, three, four, so it's about that wide, and that is what makes it a bicycle highway, plus you have some metrics uh, on what kind of separation you need and then how much flow you get through there, right? So it's very engineering logic. And then it gives you the other alternative, which is something slightly wider. Nowhere in this diagram does it cater to uh, this idea of experience. Does it say that it should have trees? Does it say that it should um, create something that's pleasant to cycle through? Not yet. Uh, but maybe that's something that we should head towards. So how do we think about this, what I would argue is today's technical conceptualization? And how do we move towards something that could be different, right? And the question I bump across is, are bicycle highways more in the traffic zone or is it more in the social zone? If we consider the traffic zone as a place where people drive their cars and the social zone as approximately the sidewalk, then where do this infrastructure called bicycle highways fit in? What kind of logic do we want to design it with? And that is what I'm curious about. And that is what I, uh, I moved ahead to uh, the methodology where I interviewed 11 practitioners from all over Europe. And I asked them basically this question is how do you conceptualize cycle highways? How does it fit in? Who are user groups? And what kind of experience are you designing for? And this is approximately what I found. Cycle highways are built as functional connections, right? So the name cycle highway, something to get you from home to work very quickly. So uh, that this functional criteria must be met for funding opportunities. So if you build a four meter wide bicycle highway with priority crossings, for example, then you get extra money from either the provincial or federal level of government. But they do see added value in designing for experience. So how do you go beyond the, the funding criteria to make something nice? 
Uh, they also have the realization that cyclists have different needs. So someone who is uh, out cycling with their children might be very different from someone who's out uh, on a Sunday ride for sport, for example. And that the design of cycle highways, it's actually quite flexible at the moment. So no one has really pinned down what this is. And we'll get back to this later. The questions I asked, what is a cycle highway? Can you describe your ideal cycling experience? How is experience considered in design? And what is the relationship to design to topology? I'm going to go through a few slides here. This one you, most of you know, perhaps, or maybe it's just peculiar to the bike nerds. Uh, this is a Hoven ring. It's actually right here in Eindhoven. And uh, they built this uh, a, a few years back as uh, a way to separate uh, an intersection. So they put the bicycles on top, and then you can see uh, the traffic goes below. So they would name this uh, a part of a bicycle highway. But uh, doing so then separates the, the bicycle path from any form of street life, scarce as it may be uh, in this area. So that's, that's one way to go about it. Uh, this is a bicycle highway from Germany. And this takes uh, us through a slightly different environment. So you have the four meter wide profile with a two meter wide sidewalk. But I think what's interesting about this is the environment in which it goes through. So this feels like a much more recreational path, yeah? And, and the question to the planners here was, okay, what are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to achieve a, a, a slice through nature? Are you trying to achieve just building a, kind of like an automobile highway straight from A to B? Or are you trying to create some curves and, and designing for the experience here? Uh, here's another thing that's named a bicycle highway. They, they call it a super highway in Copenhagen. Uh, and as you can see, this has uh, barely any green in it at all and barely any separation from the main traffic. So their bicycle paths are done in normal black asphalt, which makes a very big visual difference, right? It's a very wide bicycle path but you don't see the red like we do here. So it could be visually confusing. And that is their sign for the bicycle highway. Uh, here back in the Netherlands, this is uh, the Arnhem Nijmegen path. And this is actually now we're getting to the area of mixed traffic. So automobiles and bikes uh, share this space, but it's built very much uh, in the same way. Could be room for confusion. And finally, we get to the Kaustrat. The, the des designers of the space have, okay, put one-way car traffic and two-way bicycle traffic, but uh, it's not clear from which direction then that has on the experience. All right, so I think I prefer coming, uh, going north, but it, it, because it's in the flow of traffic, but if you're going very slowly, like if you're in a wheelchair or a scooter, then you have a lot of other bikes and cars passing you, so it might be less comfortable. I don't know, but in either way, lots of parking, lots of movements like this, people backing up, and lots of loading. So they've also, in their uh, Eindhoven city traffic plan, also named this as part of one of their uh, fast cycle routes or bicycle highways. Very interesting. Uh, we'll, we'll go through some of the things that uh, they said. So I went through 11 interviews, so I'm gonna select some quotes here, right? Some clearly have no clue. They don't know, right? So, so the, the cycle highway is being pitched as a way to get funding uh, from, uh, from a, let's say, automobile-oriented thinking. So, uh, and the end product doesn't seem to be uh, what matters. What matters is that people, we're getting people out of their cars uh, onto a bike. So we're trying to compete, basically. That brings you to the logic of competing on speed and distance and how to get people there faster, All right? So the first one is no clue. The second one, right? Uh, it says you should, it, there should be something different than an ordinary bike path, which when I interviewed these practitioners, there's, Netherlands was kind of peculiar because all the bike paths here are already of very high quality. So how do you differentiate something of an even higher quality? Um, many practitioners express that Dutch bike paths all look like bicycle highways. And to me, that also seems 
about to be the case, but in other places, yes, the special differentiation is there. So and this brings us to the question of what does high quality mean in terms of a bicycle highway? Right. Uh, some say it's from a functional definition, so as long as you have the four meter wide criteria and you have smooth pavement and you have priority at intersections, then you're good to go. But, um, right, in practice, sometimes you have to make compromises as well. And, and that's where some of the confusion, the typology comes in, is when is it okay to bring automobiles in? When is it okay to mix with pedestrians? So these are mostly left up to the street level design. So what is a bicycle highway? Still not clear. Another approach is um, uh, in terms of how the design process works, the, the process and mentality, how cyclists are prioritized. Right, so this person thinks, well, we should, bicycle highway should be something dedicated in the process of designing them. Right? And the process of designing them should involve them front and center and not as an afterthought. Now, uh, this practitioner is from London where there's significantly less cycling. So my question to you again is, well, do we already do, here, do that here in the Netherlands? And if so, then what makes it special in our context? Oh yeah, we just need to do something, put a little bit of paint. And, and there they go, right? They're trying to, in London, go against that logic and make something truly dedicated. So we're gonna try and take those conclusions a bit further, right? So here, uh, how can functional cycle connections then be designed to attract other uses, right? So this is my question back to, to practitioners. Uh, what needs and experiences are unique uh, to cyclists, right? So the practitioners kind of mention uh, the, the need, the, that they should be including these experiences in the design of cycle highways, but what are they? Uh, that's an open question to be answered from the user perspective. Uh, what, what is the added value? How do you include now these experiences and qualitative criteria in the funding instruments? And then uh, how can we deal with this flexible typology and is it desirable? So, these are the four questions that I narrowed in on as part of the conclusion uh, to go forward with. At the end, we had the also added problem of a proliferation of different types of vehicles on the bike path. Uh, in more busy places like Amsterdam, you can see that this is already causing a problem. For example, they, they just banned the motor scooters from the bike path, but there's more to take their place. They have these large, uh, bike taxis for tourists, they're hogging up the space, there's cargo delivery bikes. So as bicycle paths get more busy, how do we accommodate those without making uh, everyone's experience worse? So this is also an open question that I'm gonna look into. And that's it, thank you very much.